My boyfriend showed up to my house randomly one day. I had just woken up and I got ready so fast in my room. Mom told him that he could wait in the living room. She ended up jumping in the shower. I went outside to the living room and we ended up going to his house. When I was there, my mom called me. She said that there was $350 on the table and that $150 bill was missing. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but I had to find out the truth. So I told him to take me to Jack in the Box. We went through the drive-thru. I was so mad, but I had to keep it together. I knew that he only paid with 20s. He never paid with 50s. I ordered my food and I was waiting to see what bill he pulled out. And guess what, guys? It was a $50 bill. Then I looked at him and told him, don't pay with my mom's money. I grabbed my purse, pulled out a 20, and told him, pay with my money. His eyes just popped open. He knew he got caught. Part 2 of how me and my sisters almost got kidnapped. I called my mom and then she looked on the cameras downstairs and somebody was in the house. She never told me what the person was doing. I guess she just didn't want me worrying, but she called 911 right away. While my two little sisters were in the closet, my six-year-old sister would not stop crying and I'm pretty sure the person downstairs heard her. At this time, my mom and her boyfriend were already on the way and so were the police. I heard him coming up the steps, so I quietly opened the closet door and promised my sisters that they would stay quiet and be calm no matter what. I didn't know what he was here for, so I hid in the side of the bed in front of the closet so that he would get to me before he got to the girls. I heard him just rummaging through stuff and stuff breaking. Then a couple minutes later, I hear the police sirens. Right as I hear the police sirens, I hear our bedroom window smash. While trying to stay as calm as I can, three policemen bust down the door. They grab me and my sisters and take us outside. About five minutes after they take us outside and put us in the back of their car, my mom and her boyfriend shows up. About 20 minutes later after he was caught, they did notify us that he was wanted for murder of two younger girls and one adult male. About $10,000 of our stuff was either missing or broke. Then about a month later when we were capable to, we did move. Nothing has happened since. This is a story of how I embarrassed myself in front of my entire class. So it was 7th grade math class, and honestly, when I was in middle school, that was definitely my awkward stage. I was just really weird. I always said the wrong thing. And I was always just embarrassing myself in front of people. One day, we were going over all these drills, like, you know, lockdowns, fire drills, all that. And my teacher had a list of questions that we all had to answer, and she was the type of teacher that would just call on you randomly whether you were paying attention or not. And back then, we weren't even allowed to have phones, so I was just completely zoned out because of my ADHD, and the teacher decides to call on me after she had asked this question. If you're in the bathroom by yourself and an intruder comes in and says, is anybody in here, what do you say? Then she calls on me, and I don't know why, but the first thing in my head was to say that you say no. And right away, my teacher looked at me like I was an idiot and started crying laughing with the entire class. I was mortified. Here's a story time of how me and my sisters almost got kidnapped. So my mom and her boyfriend were just going to go out and have a night to themselves. And I was home watching my two little sisters. At the time, I was 13. My two little sisters were 9 and 6. So around 6 p.m., my mom and her boyfriend leave. Me and my sisters just sit down and watch a movie, and then I get up to make them dinner. I get paranoid really easily, and while I was making them dinner, I look out the kitchen window, and I thought I seen somebody in the backyard. I text my mom, and she gets on the cameras that are outside, and she said nobody was out there. I continue making them dinner, we sit down and eat, and then we start watching another movie. Then we start hearing knocking. It wasn't coming from any of the doors, it was coming from the side of the house. I didn't want to bother my mom on her one night out, so I just took the kids and we went upstairs and watched a movie in my room. My six-year-old sister at the time went to the bathroom and she came back in literal tears. She was literally crying so hard until I finally got her to stop and tell me what was wrong. She said as she was walking back from the bathroom, she seen somebody downstairs. I quietly locked my door and I put my sisters in the closet and I called my mom right away. I'm running out of time. This is why you should never leave the table when you're on a blind date. One of my best friends and I worked at the same restaurant. When I came in later that day from my shift, she told me a crazy story. She said that her first table were this guy and this girl and she could tell they were on a first date. The girl was nervous so she ordered a glass of wine. As far as she knew, the date seemed to be going well and the girl got up to go to the bathroom. Right when my friend was about to come over and bring the silverware, she saw him put something in her wine. My friend, obviously terrified and freaking out, let our manager know, who then let the police know, and ran into the bathroom to tell her what was going on. The girl ended up staying in the bathroom until the police came, arrested him, and escorted him out of the building. It was noon on a Tuesday. You don't think you're going to be drugged on, at noon on a Tuesday. So as I'm walking towards the bedroom, I hear somebody say, I need it. And I knew that it was my grandma. And I was like, that's a little weird. So I walk in, flip the lights on real quick. 
I see my boyfriend balls deep in my grandma. Balls deep. When I'm telling you they turn around. And so I'm walking out like, oh my God, this is not fucking happening. This is not fucking happening. I turn around, I shut the door and I walk back in. He's sitting on the bed with his heads in his with his head in his hands and she's like acting like she's asleep, but she was awake. I know she was awake. Like she's acting like she's in and out of it. I saw the look on her face when I walked in. I know that she it was consensual. She consented to it. Anyways, I grabbed him by his fucking ear and I told him, "Get the fuck out." I take him to the to the porch and I continuously hit this mother Okay, this is part two of my teacher almost getting fired. After that whole incident, my class was dead silent for the rest of the period. We then all went to lunch. None of us really talked about it, but then all of a sudden a woman came up to us. We were all kind of sitting around the same table. This woman, I guess she was administration. I have no idea who she was. I think what had happened was a bunch of students had reported him. She asked us all for Mr. W's class to follow her. I don't remember if this was the same day or the following day, but she asked us to follow her into an empty classroom. I think it was used for testing. She had us all sit around the table and recount the incident to the best of our ability. Summer was there. What she wanted to know was basically, did Mr. W throw that binder at Summer. And we all recounted it basically the same, but at the end of the day, we all said yes. But eventually they let us all go. The following day, Mr. W was really sad. Barely spoke to us, barely did anything. He was passing out some work. He looked at Summer and said, Summer, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw that binder at you. His voice sounded like he was about to break. But we did have him as our teacher for the rest of the year, so no, he wasn't actually fired. But I do think Summer was terrified to speak up for the rest of that year. And the rest of us kind of didn't want to be in that class anymore. Yeah. I'm going to tell you guys about the time that my entire class teamed up to take my teacher down. And by down, I mean fired, which is terrible, but... And to be clear, I wasn't involved in the incident. I was just asked in to be a witness along with the rest of the class. If you're not interested at this point, like, I don't even know. So when I was in sixth grade, I had this teacher called Mr. W. We're going to call him Mr. W. He was our science teacher. And he was fine. He wasn't, like, amazing or bad. He was just okay. He did smell, like, really, really bad. But again, that didn't affect his teaching at all. One day, however, I don't even know how this happened. He asked us all to get started on our work. He was a little irritated that day. I don't even remember why. One of the girls in our class, her name was Summer. She didn't have her workbook. Mr. W asked her where her work was. I didn't bring it today. They started arguing. The rest of the class was kind of silent, just watching this. She's a nice girl. She wasn't attacking him or anything. He did, however, get very angry. So angry, in fact, that he grabbed his binder and threw it across the room over her head. It just barely skipped her head and slammed on the floor. This wasn't like an empty binder from the dollar store. It was a teacher binder full of work. We were all silent. Summer stopped talking. Look for part two to find out what happens.